On today's video, we're going to go over how you can accurately set the depth of your slip bobbers. Hey there outdoor YouTubers, it's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. And you know, in today's video, we're going to be talking about setting the depth of our slip bobber rigs. Now, if you want to set that depth at like two, three, four feet, um, it's really pretty straightforward, right? You're probably going to use the same method that you always used with your clip-on styles of bobbers, right? You just kind of eyeball, say, three feet, clip the bobber on, cast it out, and you're good to go. Now, of course, the difference with the slip bobbers is you're not really clipping the bobber on, you're actually adjusting the bobber stop. And, you know, I did do a video on several different types of bobber stops. If you're kind of interested in that, uh, go to my channel, Kinetter's Practical Outdoors, and the title of the video is called How to Rig Four Different Types of Slip Bobber Stops. So I get into the nuts and bolts of the actual stops themselves. Uh, you know, so I think if you're interested in that, you'd probably enjoy that video. But for this video, we're just going to talk about setting the depth of our slip bobber rigs. And again, if you're just going two or three feet, you're probably just going to eyeball it, adjust your stop to two or three feet, whatever you want, and you'll be good to go. But uh, let's think about some other scenarios. You know, because with slip bobbers, we can fish at a very wide array of depths, right? We can pretty much fish at any depth we want. We're not limited by the length of the pole like we were with these old clip-on style bobbers. So let's, let's uh, throw out a scenario there. Let's say we're anchored out in a weed flat. We're anchored in 10 feet of water. It's 10 feet of water all around us. We're going to be casting out in different directions out into 10 feet of water. There's, you know, there's some weeds on the bottom, so we don't want to go right down to the bottom. Um, let's say we want to be two feet off the bottom. Okay, so we want to set our slip bobber stop at eight feet. Well, how do we go about doing that, right? Um, you know, do we break out a tape measure and measure out eight feet and set our stop there? Mm. That's kind of a clunky way to do things. So what I like to do, and, and I do measure, you know, I will be measuring out that eight feet, but instead of using a measuring tape, I'm gonna be using a measuring stick. And that measuring stick is gonna be the rod that I'm using. This particular rod, this is a seven foot rod. So we can use that seven feet as a reference to get our stop to eight feet, right? So what I like to do, set the bobber stop right toward the tip of the pole like this one is. Then pull the line back down. And as you can see, my jig, it might be a hook, but in this case it's a jig. This jig is about a foot from the bottom of the pole and the length of this pole is seven feet. So I need to move this bobber stop about two more feet up. Give us two more feet of depth. So I got the bobber stop here and I'm just gonna guesstimate two feet right there. And it'll be the same thing. I'm gonna reel it up. I'm gonna get that bobber stop right toward the tip of the pole. I'm going to pull this back now. And there we go. Our jig, it's about 10 inches below the end of the pole. So it's really not quite 8 feet. And if we're pretty particular, we can adjust it even more. We can add another couple inches to it. And then again, we're going to reel that stop up. That stops right at the tip of the pole. Stick her up in the air. Pull this line back. And there we go. You know, that's, that's pretty close to one more foot beyond the length of this pole. We've got a seven foot pole. So we know we're really close to eight feet with that setup. Our stop is real close to 8 feet, so we can cast out into that 10 feet of water, even if there's some low-lying weeds, and this jig, we're probably going to throw a leech on or something, 
this jig and that leech are just going to be hovering above that low-lying weeds and hopefully we'll catch some fish, right? Okay, here's another scenario. Let's say we're out in 25 feet of water, okay? And we're anchored in 25 feet of water and again we're going to be fishing in 25 feet of water. Well, we might want to set our stops at 24 feet, you know, just to have that uh, jig or hook with a worm on it or whatever we happen to be using maybe we want that a foot off the bottom so maybe we want to set our stop at 24 feet well I'm probably not going to be using this seven foot rod as a reference to measure out 24 feet that's that's really not going to work out very well that's that's going to be really clunky to do that so how do we go about doing it well what I like to do in that situation is I like to break out these little clip-on weights, right? Any of you ice fishermen out there, you, you know exactly where I'm going with this. Um, but, you know, they, they really work well in certain situations, slip bobber fishing in the summer, too. And all you're going to do with this is you're going to clip this onto your hook or jig, and you're going to drop it over the side of the boat, and you're going to let it down over the side of the boat, and you're just going to adjust your stop up and down until this bobber sinks about one foot below the surface of the water. This is going to be on the bottom. Dunk, it's going to hit the bottom. And we want to set our stop. So this weight brings this bobber about one foot below the surface of the water, right? Because then when we reel up and we take this off, and now when we cast it out, now the bobber is going to be on the surface, and this hook or jig is going to be about one foot off the bottom. Okay, so these work real well for some situations in the summertime too. Now here's another scenario. Let's say we're drifting along and we come across a 16 foot hump. We drift across the 16 foot hump and there's all kinds of fish on top of it. So we slip off to the side, throw the anchors out, so now we want to be able to cast our slip bobbers up to the 16 foot hump. You know, we probably want to set our stops at about 15 feet, right? Trouble is, this time, now we're anchored in 30 feet of water. So we really can't use the water that we're anchored in. We can't use that as a reference to set our slip bobber stop, you know, like we did in the other scenario with the clip-on weight. Now we're anchored in 30 feet of water, but we want to cast up to 16. We want to probably set our stops at 15. So how are we going to do that, right? Well, I'm probably not going to want to use the length of the rod as a reference on that one. 15 feet's a little long, it's going to be a little clunky to try to use this rod as, as a measuring stick, you know, for 15 feet. Um, so what I like to do in that situation is I like to use my own personal wingspan as the measuring tape. And, and I know just through the years I've measured a few different times, when I stretch my wingspan out without stretching all the way, just a nice easy like right there, boom, that's 5 feet, okay? So all I'm going to do, I'm going to put my hooker jig in one hand and I'm just going to slide out five feet at a time. There's five. There's ten. I came to my stop now. So I'm going to slide that stop just a little bit. There's ten. I'm going to keep the stop between these fingers because I'm going to keep sliding it. Sliding it. And there's fifteen. This stop is going to be really, really close to set at the 15 foot mark. So now we should be able to cast up on top of that 16 foot hump and hopefully uh, catch some of those fish that we marked, right? You know, most of the time, us slip bobber fishermen, we know the depth that we want to set our bobber stops to. We know the depth that we want to be fishing in. But sometimes we don't, right? Sometimes we're casting to areas and we're not sure of the depth, you know? We might have a, a, an idea in our heads but we might be fishing from shore, so we're not uh, completely sure the depth that we're casting out to, out into a lake. Um, for me personally, a lot of times I'm fishing from a boat and I'm casting to shore. And, you know, I can kind of guesstimate, but, you know, I'm not completely sure the depth that I'm casting to. So a lot of times I'm doing a little bit of trial and error, you know. Um, maybe I think I'm casting into about five feet of water, so I'll set my stop to four. But if I'm not getting bit, I may start to slide that stop up a little bit and bring that rig down in the water column a little bit more. 
uh, thinking that maybe maybe I guesstimated a little bit wrong, maybe I'm too high, maybe that's not why I'm catching fish. So I'll experiment a little bit like that. And what you can do when you're experimenting is you can go too far, right? You can set that stop too deep and now your rig goes down and it goes right to the bottom and it's just laying there on the bottom. And most of the time that's not really what you're trying to do with slip bobbers, right? So one thing, another thing that I'd like to point out is that, uh, you know, I like to fish with these still bobbers, these still slip bobbers, the grommeted end, and I really like to go with the unweighted ones, okay? Uh, the this, this same style of bobber comes weighted or unweighted, and I'll kind of explain why. Uh, what happens if you use the weighted bobbers and you cast out, and especially if you're experimenting with the depth a little bit, you're not really sure the depth that you're casting to, and if you've got your rig set too deep to where your rig is going right to the bottom before the stop comes in contact with this, it's harder to tell if that's happening with these weighted bobbers, because this is what happens. You cast this bobber out, and the line slides through it, but even before the stop reaches the top of the bobber, this weighted one sits upright right away because it's got this weight on it. So immediately this bobber sits upright, okay? Even if that rig slides all the way through, sits on the bottom and the stop hasn't even reached this one yet, this bobber will be sitting upright. Whereas the unweighted bobber, you cast this out, it likes to lay on its side. And it'll lay on its side until the rig slides, 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 until the stop comes in contact with it and now it'll sit upright if the rig is off the bottom, your sinkers, your hook, that sort of thing. If that's off the bottom and this bobber is holding the whole weight of your rig, now it'll stand upright. If you've got your bobber stop set too deep with this unweighted bobber, it'll just lay on its side. It'll slide all the way through, all the way through. Your rig hits the bottom, the stop is still out here somewhere. This bobber will still lay on its side. So it's kind of an indication that you've got your bobber stop depth set too deep you know, if you use these unweighted bobbers. So that's just another little thing to keep in mind, you know, when you're out buying a few bobbers. Me personally, especially when I'm experimenting, uh, I really like to go with the unweighted ones. So keep that in mind. And also, uh, remember to hunt, fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless.